Hello and welcome as we gather together here for the second Sunday in Advent. Uh, we're marching our way very quickly towards the uh, celebration of Christmas, the coming of Christ, but we're still looking forward as well through the Advent season to uh, when Christ returns again in glory. We're going to be following the order of divine service setting one as we have been through Advent so far and we'll continue with through Advent. And uh, we're going to begin, though, with our opening hymn, number 411, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare for the coming of the King, we are always, always tasked by God to come before Him on our knees, spiritually speaking, in repentance. So if this was your repentant confession, then hear the beautiful news that the coming of the King has warranted for you. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for you and for His sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 50, verses 1 to 15. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes, He does not keep silence. Before Him is a devouring fire, Around him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above, And to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones, Who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declared his righteousness, For God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills, and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world in its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and perform your vows to the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. During the Advent season, in order to begin to take a bit of a more somber approach as we come near Christmas, we uh, do not sing the Gloria, and so we continue with a salutation and collect. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading for today is from Malachi, the fourth chapter. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and just decrees that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual for today is from Psalm 50, verses 2 and 3 and 5. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes. He does not keep silence. Gather to me, my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Our epistle for today is from the book of Romans, the 15th chapter. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles, and sing to your name. And again it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 
but Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, There will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the, look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our hymn of the day for today is number 336. Lo, he comes with clouds descending. Number 336. <laughs> Shall their true 
rapture with what rapture with what rapture gaze we on those glorious scars yea amen let all adore thee high on the Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is Christ. Amen. Dear fellow redeemed, what do you hope for today? Is it peace on earth? Is it goodwill to men? Maybe something a little simpler. Do you hope for warmer weather or maybe an end to the snow? Are you hoping that the sermon today will be short? Well, regarding the last question, you take what you get. As for the others, those will eventually happen, some sooner, some later. But what is the hope of the Christian? At the very least, what should the hope of the Christian be? The Blessed Apostle St. Paul addresses this when he writes, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, to the Philippians, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Paul believed that it was better for him to die. Why? Well, because he wanted to be with his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He knew in whom he believed, and he knew and firmly believed in what was awaiting him, eternal life with Jesus in heaven. That was his hope. This hope he wrote about in his epistles. He boldly confessed his Savior, for, as he also writes, We preach Christ crucified, to the Jews a stumbling block, and to the Greeks foolishness, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. This same Christ was foretold of by the patriarchs and prophets, the Christ who infancy, in, in infancy submitted to circumcision as a witness to the Jews, and who at the start of his public ministry became baptized for the sake of the Gentiles. It was in him that Jews and Gentiles were to place their hope. But the Jews rejected him. St. John writes in his gospel, He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. And again, this time quoting Jesus, Salvation is of the Jews. Jesus' saving work on the cross, completed for and rejected by the Jews, the gospel was there for the Gentiles. There was their hope, Jesus Christ. And he who shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, laud him, all you peoples. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel, to you, O people of Zion, to you, redeemed by the blood of Christ. Let's be honest, it's easy for us to forget that Jesus, our Emmanuel, our God with us, has come to us because we don't look for him. Our minds are focused on so many other things, much like Martha's was, neglecting the one thing needful. Go here, shop there, do this, do that, put up the tree now, wrap the presents. 
the to-do list in December can become really quite lengthy. And we're so wrapped up in seeing the baby Jesus in the manger that we lose sight of the incarnate Christ in his word and sacraments. Today as we pray in his word. We're so enamored with the wrapping and the trappings that come with this month that we forget about the blue and the purple that are prominently placed around here. Blue, right? I've got it all over me. The color of royalty and purple at times, the color of repentance. We forget about the king who came to save us and our need for this king of kings and lord of lords. But behold, he comes. He comes to give you hope. Hope in the resurrection of the body and the life of the world to come. Hope for the here and now. He gives you hope as you experience trials and afflictions, sadness and anger, grief and loss. He says to you this day, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Again, he says to you, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And again, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. From the cross he spoke for you, he prayed for you. Father, forgive them. As your Lord and Savior was dying on the cross, he spoke to you the three greatest words that you could ever hear. It is finished. The work needed for you to be forgiven, to be saved, has been completed in the death of Jesus Christ. He took your hopeless situation of facing eternal condemnation and put it upon himself, carrying it with him out of the Jordan River all the way to the cross, where he bled and died to take away your sin and the sin of the whole world. And to give you the certainty of the hope of eternal life, Christ rose from the dead. Sin has been defeated. Death has been beaten. The power of the devil, our Lord has made impotent. The risen and ascended Jesus has sent us his Holy Spirit, so that we should believe the word proclaimed, and believe in the word become flesh, that we would live in this blessed hope, both now and and in the world to come. God says through the prophet Malachi in our Old Testament reading, But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves, feasting on the bread of life who comes to us in, with, and under the bread and wine in his body and blood. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue by confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and most merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for all your goodness and tender mercies, especially for the gift of your dear Son and for the revelation of your will and grace. Implant your word in us that, with good and honest hearts, we may keep it and bring forth the fruits of faith. We humbly implore you to rule and govern your church throughout the world. Bless all those who proclaim your truth that we may be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word 
and that faith in you may be strengthened, love toward others increased, and your kingdom extended. Send forth laborers into your harvest, and sustain those whom you have sent, that the word of reconciliation may be proclaimed to all people, and the gospel preached in all the world. Grant health and prosperity to all who were in authority, especially to His Majesty the King, the Governor-General, the Prime Minister and the Parliament, the government of this province and all who have authority over us. Grant them grace to rule according to your good pleasure for the maintenance of righteousness and the hindrance and punishment of wickedness, that we may lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty. According to your good pleasure, turn the hearts of our enemies and adversaries, that they may cease their hostilities and walk with us in meekness and in peace. Comfort, O God, with your Holy Spirit all who are in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity. Grant courage and steadfastness, especially to those who suffer for your name's sake, that they may receive and accept their afflictions in the confidence that you will acknowledge them as your own. Although we have deserved your righteous wrath and punishment, yet we ask you, O most merciful Father, not to remember the sins of our youth nor our many transgressions. Out of your unspeakable goodness and mercy, defend us from all harm and danger to body and soul. Preserve us from false doctrine, from war and bloodshed, from plague and pestilence, from all calamity by fire and water, from hail and tempest, from failure of harvest and from famine, from anguish of heart and despair of your mercy, and from an evil death. In every time of trouble, show yourself a very present help, the Savior of all, especially to those who believe. Cause all needed fruits of the earth to prosper that we may enjoy them in due season. Give success to the Christian training of the young, to all lawful occupations on land, sea, and air, and to all pure arts and useful knowledge, crowning them with your blessing. Receive, O God, our bodies and souls and all our talents, together with the offerings we bring you. For by his blood your Son has purchased us to be your own, that we may live under him in his kingdom. These and whatsoever other things you would have us ask of you, O God, Grant us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we have again worshipped in your presence and received both forgiveness for our many sins and the assurance of your love in Jesus Christ. We thank you for this undeserved grace and ask you to keep us in faith until we inherit eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our hymn to depart today is hymn number 402, The Only Son from Heaven. Number 402.
sun from heaven foretold by ancient seers by God the Father given in human form appears no sphere his light confining no star so brightly shining as he our morning star O time of God appointed O bright and holy morn he comes the king anointed the Christ the virgin born grim death to vanquish for us to open heaven before us and bring us life again O Lord our hearts awaken to know and love you more in faith to stand unshaken in spirit to adore that we through this world moving each glimpse of heaven proving may reap its fullness there O Father here before you you with God the Holy Ghost and Jesus we adore you O pride of angel host before you mortals lowly cry holy 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 O blessed Trinity Thank you so much for coming and taking part of this service as we celebrate the wonderful coming of Christ, that amazing gift that he brings us. And so, yes, uh, you know, behold, he comes to give us hope. And may you cling to that hope until the day when you too are brought to Jesus' side. Amen.